it. They turn every question into a, into a, uh, every answer into a question. It's a great, it's a great culture the way they use the language. I don't think I can take it. You think I want to put a bomb in your mother's house? <laughs> oh, Lordy, what a good day this is. I had enough coffee to finally enjoy it. Teddy's asleep right now waiting for the show to end. He knows when it ends in about, he stares at me. He lays there right till the show's over. And right when he hears the, the closing part of the show, he stretches. And he knows he gets a run around the cul-de-sac if I'm out here. And I, all I can think now is of the valve. And once I saw that on the, uh, on the screen, the, uh, the echocardiogram, all I see now is a valve that's not closing with blood leaking. <laughs> it's terrible, really. You know, maybe, you know, when you, when you eat of the apple of knowledge, so to speak, right? Isn't that the whole metaphor from the Bible? You eat of the apple of knowledge. Can you ever be the same again? No. Nah. No. Better you be an ignorant moron and vote for Obama and think he loves America. Better you be an ignorant moron and say America's, well, well that, that's not who we are. Well, we welcome everyone, even, even grifters, murderers, and rapists. Because we're bigger than that. You know, be an idiot. Live in that world. You know, we welcome everybody. We're a nation of immigrants. All the platitudes. Oh, yeah, I'm an immigrant son. I know that. We were a nation of immigrants who came here to work, not to work the system. Yeah, I know that. But you see, when uh, the statement by Emma Lazarus was inscribed on the Statue of Liberty, give us your tired, your poor, your hungry, etc., there was no welfare. There was no welfare system where they came and sat on their behinds and knocked out children like bread in a, in a, in a factory. No, 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 no. It was a different time. Yeah, give us your tired, your poor, and your hungry, right? That's not what they were bringing in immigrants for when that was put in the Statue of Liberty. It was to work them like slaves in the garment center and in building things around America. The Italians came and they worked like slaves. Stonemasons, builders worked like heck. And they worked their way up. So two generations later, or a generation or two later, the children are doing better. That was the American way. Now they want to go to the head of the class. Now they want to own the company and own the country. They don't just come here anyway. They own everything. They own the country. They tell you to shut up. And it's no longer when in Rome do as the Romans do. Now it's when in Rome tell the Romans to shut up and cover up your statues. Because the chief bugaboo from I I I Iran is going there. Could you ever believe you'd live in a time like this that wimps in Italy would put boxes, wood boxes around statues going back ancient times because it might offend some phony in a robe from Iran? A man who imprisons, tortures, murders. Ra it's unbelievable to me. Uh, oh, he's uh, Khomeini coming from uh, Iran. He's going to visit our museum. But cover up all the ancient Roman statues. That's right. Cover it up. Poor man. You don't want to offend the man. He's never seen anything like that. Once he takes off those holy robes and that thing off his head, he's not like you and I. No, no, he's more superior to you. Right. What a world of idiots running the West. Holy God, Trump is the only one to save the world. Not only the West. You know, see, I, you know, I see an alliance between Trump and Putin. And when that alliance is created, you're going to see a different world. You're going to see a different world. Right now you have America being run by a man who is not only undermining all of our values and everything we believe in, but he is actually trying to destroy Vladimir Putin for reasons that are very complicated, but they're not solely political. They're extremely personal. I've spoken about it, and I've written about it. Do you know that President Obama is the first president in modern history who was not nominated in the top two positions of being the most powerful person in the world? Did you know that? Did you know that this egomaniac, narcissist, sociopath in the White House has a personal vendetta against Vladimir Putin because he was pushed out of the winner's circle by Putin? This is the kind of danger we are in. But anyway, you know, whatever. You don't want to hear any of that. Your mind is made up. Let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation about the interview, you uh, about the news, views and reviews. KSFO, line nine. Go ahead. Question or comment, 30 seconds or less. Fire away. Dr. Savage, that interview was the best. Every time you have Mr. Trump on, he gets more calm and he sounds more presidential. It, uh, it was fantastic, and he should appoint you ambassador to the U.N. first. Job that that's the job you should have for one year to clean that mess out, 
<laughs> oh, that would be funny if I were ever UN ambassador. The first thing I would do is I'd give a speech saying, we are officially out of business, wrap up your bags, empty out your apartments and go home, because <laughs> we're turning it into condominiums. Yes, the, the Republican establishment, they have no shame. See, they're all talkers, and Donald is a doer, and that's why they are so scared of him. He's going to expose them for the nothings they are. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed the interview. I'm glad you waited for it. You know, the buildup was significant, and I think that the delivery was uh, on target. I think I delivered on the goods, don't you? I mean, I don't think I asked softball questions. I know I didn't. No one's asked these questions. We actually made news today. Every interview... if, you, if you analyze the questions, and if there was a fair media, if there was a fair media, so-called conservative media, where is the conservative media? Can you name the conservative media? Who is the conservative media? Where does it exist? There'll be headlines all over the conservative media. Trump says he will appoint a military, um, an experienced military man to the Defense Department. That's news, isn't it? Yes, sir. If that is That's news. That's news. That would be in the conservative media that doesn't exist. I asked him about that. I said, would you agree on this show to only appoint a combat experienced veteran as a defense secretary? I can recommend Senator Tom Cotton for the job. He answered the question. It was news. But since there's no conservative media, conservative media, what's conservative? Walking around with a halo on their head? Hi, I'm a conservative. What does that mean? You're better than everybody? I'm cleaner than everybody? I'm more honest than everybody? What does that mean? That's absurd. It means nothing. It means nothing today. It's a label. Bernie Sanders is a far-left radical, probably a communist. That's not a label. That's real. For his whole political life, he boasted that he's a socialist. All of a sudden now, he's not a socialist anymore, according, according to Roger Ailes and Fox News. They don't identify him anymore as a socialist. They say, a oh, Democrat candidate. They've dropped the word socialist at Fox News. You want to see bias? Don't look any further than any of the, of the media outlets. I asked them about the bully thing. I pondered whether I should even ask it. But you know, he didn't take umbrage when I said some people call you a bully. Because I immediately followed up by saying, I tell them we need a tough negotiator to beat our enemies. I said, Americans have been wimped down and think we need a nice guy in the Oval Office. I said, Mr. Trump, how would you appeal to all of these brainwashed fools? He didn't say, how dare you ask the question, hang up. He's not as thin-skinned as people would have you believe. He didn't hear about the questions before. Nobody sent him the questions. Nobody asked me to send him the questions. Okay? It's not, it wasn't a setup. Now, why did he not respond? Why did he, take, why did he not take umbrage to that question? Because he understood where I was coming from. That means he has subtlety. Do you understand that? So all of the doubting Thomases out there should understand that he's much different than you may want him to think you are. he is. You have to deal in reality. He's far more intelligent than you. He's far more experienced than you. He's far wealthier than you. He has better shoes than you. He has a nicer wife than you. That's the reason you don't trust him. It's as simple as that. It used to be said that that was the reason. And, unfortunately, it's still true. Human jealousy knows no bounds. And, again, I'm going to repeat it over and over again until you hear it. All of those people who have been attacking Trump until very recently, maybe, oh, a week ago, all of them, every last one of them, were the ones who were trying to run my show off the radio, trying to denigrate my books. Every last one of those doubting Thomases who have been trying to run Trump down until about a week ago were running against Michael Savage for various and sundry reasons. They're one and the same. Both Trump and I are outsiders. Both Trump and I have been independents from the get-go. We have never been supportive of either party for obvious reasons. And our time has come. Well, how do I close the show after such a stupendously wonderful original interview other than saying thanks for listening to the show and I hope that you got something out of it and help you make up your mind for the most important presidential race of our life. I mean, we have him versus the, the grifter who every day it looks like she's going to be indicted or, or resign. I mean, there's no question there's a lot of pressure on her to step down or take the, take the, uh, the indictment because that's what's coming down. We got the FBI pushing against her for good reason. Apparently, she uh, transmitted uh, top secret emails beyond top secret. Then you got this lunatic, a lifetime socialist, communist, 
and now even Fox News is deleting the, the socialist connection to this man's name. We have the highest corporate taxes in the world, and here's a man saying he's going to raise taxes. And instead of a real debate last night, what we had was an infomercial by CNN, as you would expect, because they're all socialists slash communist anarchists at CNN and the other networks. So they give them a three, a, however long it was, an infomercial on CNN. And the idiot Republicans let Megyn Kelly turn them against each other. They shouldn't take her bait. That's all I can say. She's a showgirl, a good showgirl at that. And uh, when she tries to set them up against Donald Trump or against each other, what they have to do is smile at her and turn the argument and, and attack Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Or get real personal and attack Megyn Kelly and make it very personal. What, is she above the law? Her skirts are so clean? They can't attack her and say, look, why don't you act like a journalist instead of a, you know, whatever. I mean, they, they, there's a ways to do this. They don't have to take it from her. They could do it with a smile, too. But I don't know that they will. The only one who might do it would be Donald. But you know that she's going to set him up because that's, uh, that's her stock and trade. And uh, they shouldn't do it. Well, tomorrow's a rough day for me. Six in the morning, he's got to go to the doctor, the dog, sit there all morning till he takes him in. And I don't know what, to, you know, who knows. I'm going to go on the air while he's in there, while he's out of it. They're going to get the call, not the call. Who knows what's going to go on. Another man would take the day off. But I won't because the show must go on. That's all. Things have happened in our lives, and you, you go to work anyway. It's only a dog, right? Well, you eat meat, don't you? You eat hamburger. What's the big deal? What are you making a big deal of it? Who cares about that when Ted Cruz is running? Uh, does that dog know anything about the Constitution? All right, that's what you think. But uh, I don't know. All I think now is when he sleeps in the bed, is that going to be the last heartbeat? I mean, she told me. She said, count the number of beats per minute as he's sleeping. Uh, every time I look at his breathing now, all I can think about is a valve that's not closing right, leaking blood back into the other chamber. I don't want to know it. I mean, I studied biology. I know this. I don't want to know about the mitral valve. Now I want to go get a cardiogram. I only had one a year ago on the treadmill, looking like Bob Dole with the undershirt, running till I thought I would call. I thought they were going to have to call 911, but they didn't. Perfect. I went out immediately to Joe's bar. I didn't know. I didn't go to Joe's bar. I don't drink that much. It's a shtick. I don't even like alcohol. Once in a while I'll have a drink, but with what's going on in the world today, I'd rather not. Well, look, it's been a great night on the Savage Nation. I hope you've enjoyed it. I think I did a fairly fine job for you and we'll post it on michaelsavage.com where you can find a listing for the most important of my most recent books from health diseases without borders shock shocking to think that they're bringing them in with illnesses but they are thanks for listening savage